This is video number two, looking at creation of a player dashboard. We've got six sources of data. We've looked at three already. That is updates, match performance, and physical. And we have three to go, wellness, load, and medical. Just deleting those notes that I made for myself, just to clear some space. What I've found is that more and more athletes are sitting down with a coach or a sports scientist to look at this kind of work rather than having something printed out. And the reason why I mention that is that that determines how you might lay out your dashboard. As we can see on my screen, there's a whole lot of white space to the right here that could be used rather than going down the page. If we wanted to PDF or print this out, then doing that would probably be a better option. But what I'd like to do is have wellness load and medical be on the right hand side of this screen. Let's start with wellness. Put a little bit of a gap between these two parts. So I copy this and paste it. That brings across the formats and it makes it pretty easy for me to um, get started knowing the correct dimensions to keep things even. Let's look at our wellness data set we have got four measures. Now we could do something to combine these measures into one. That's a relatively common thing to do. So why don't we add a new column to the table. What you may have seen there is when I inserted that column, the data updated. That's because I've used once again a random data generator. The RAND between function is incredibly useful when you're doing these kinds of projects because you can just set up thousands of rows of data with a few clicks. Control shift down arrow selects all the way to the bottom of the data set. Control C copies it and paste values changes what was a formula into just a hard number and now it's not going to change constantly. Some of these four measures and because it's a table it automatically applies that formula to every single row in the column. So we've got a sum score here now. On my workings page I'm going to go up to the top and just to mirror the layout from the dashboard sheet I'm going to put the workings for wellness high up on the right hand side. So what do I want to do? I'm going to do the average of the last seven days, the average of the last 30 days, and the overall average for this athlete inside the entire data set for all of our now five measurements. And this will just get us started. And so what we need to make this work is a current date. We don't have that anywhere in the system at the moment. And so we could be tricky. We could do something like this. We want to find the maximum number. A lot of tables here, but we've got one at the bottom called TVL Wellness. And inside that is date. Now, dates in Excel are just seen as numbers, and so therefore the maximum of this column will be the most recent date. Once we correct the format, it's telling us that the most recent data in the system is the 18th of the 2nd, 2017. So we could use that. What is the average of the seven days, including this particular day? The other option is that we could have a drop-down box or a text box on the dashboard asking the user to enter the current date. Both would work just fine, but sometimes uh, automating things and making them as easy as possible for the user is a good idea. So let's go with this current plan anyway. We want a multi-criteria average. Average ifs does that for us. We want to look in the wellness table. And first up, we want to look at sleep. 
first criteria is that the name has to equal the selected name up here in B2. Second criteria is that the date needs to be, and this has to be in quotes, less than or equal to this number. And we could copy and paste that criteria, but I'm just going to do it again because it didn't take too long. It says that the date must be greater than this number minus seven. So three criteria, it's quite a lot. But nevertheless, it works just fine. And if I copy this, I can then just go through and edit them. There is a way to drag and auto-complete these formula, but unfortunately what happens is that all of these column references drag at the same time, so you end up looking at a different column. Now you can do something to stop that from happening, but it ends up making the formula really large and unwieldy. So uh, in this case, just to keep it simple, I want to copy and paste it. Instead of sleep, we're looking at fatigue. This one, soreness. This one, stress. And final one as well, the sum. If I drag that down, we just have to change on each of these. That to 30. And we've now got those two sets of data. I would in all instances go to number one decimal place. And so um, with wellness, you always want to have individual comparisons rather than uh, just looking at straight out numbers. So knowing what a player normally scores is quite helpful when you're looking at what their current answers are. The other one to do is much simpler that is just an average if. Now, even though average if has a slightly different arrangement, we can just delete these out the way and it'll accept this just fine. So we're looking at the wellness sleep score average for this athlete throughout the entire data set. Because this forming is a bit shorter, what I want to show you is what happens when you drag across. If I drag here, we can see that the formula correctly dragged across to fatigue, but it also dragged across date. Instead of date, we need it to be staying on the name field. I'm going to just show you how to do that if you haven't already seen me do that before. For some reason, this is the equivalent of using the F4 key. Put the column reference in twice with colons in between and a double bracket around it and it allows you to drag that across. And so as we can see here, it's dragged across the correct wellness measure, which is in this case fatigue, but it's locked the name one in place. As we can see as we go across, that's done exactly what we want. So we've got these three numbers now, and we could directly reference them in the table. So let's go and do that. I'm just going to copy this, go to the dashboard sheet, and put that in. I might give myself a little bit more space here. And so there we are, we've got that information. I can simply go direct, reference, 
through to the working sheet. Drag it across, drag down. Tidy up the number format, center it. And perhaps I could take that out as well, just to make it fit really nicely in the cell and not require me to resize anything. So we've got kind of a snapshot of what they're currently like, what their last 30 days was like, and what they're normally like. So what does the entire data set show us? So what it's telling us at the moment is that the scores are, are going down slightly in most cases. On its own, wellness data isn't always that useful. Often you want to look at it in conjunction with the training load and, and other factors. So uh, before I do any more information on wellness, I'm going to pull in some training load data. I'm going to start by doing that in the working sheet. Leave a bit of a blank space here and pull it in just down in about row 16. So we have the most recent date from the wellness section. So let's see how that lines up. We can go to the control panel sheet and see where the 18th of February is. So if we scroll down, we can see that the 18th of February is in week 38. So we've got quite a bit of data to look at if we wanted to. So on the working sheet, what I'm going to do is just put some numbers in because these help us with formula. Let's go to 20. I want to find out what week we've got. If I look in the weeks table and in the weeks column, I want to match this date up the top here in the same table. But in the field called Monday, instead of an exact match, I need to do a less than match. And so that's going to tell us that we've got week 38. If I scoop this match piece out, and paste it as an independent formula, that's going to be a bit more useful to me. I can now use index here to give me a list that's a little bit more dynamic. And so if I pull this up all the way to the top, and I pull this up all the way to the top, it's now giving me the most recent 20 weeks. Now, if I'm looking at training load, that's kind of where I'm interested in. Going back about half the season or thereabouts to see uh, if there's anything that might be interesting to align to the wellness stuff. So let's look at duration, RPE, and session RPE load. So if we want to pull out the total duration, average RPE, and total load for each of these weeks, a sum ifs formula will do that for us. Don't know the name of the table, but by typing TBL, um, it, once again, my consistency has allowed me to just pick it from a list. We need to extract the sum of duration using our two criteria, which are firstly athlete name, second criteria is just the week, and 
the week is typed in for us here. So locking that once again on just the column. We can double click and send that down easy as you like. Copy that and paste it over here to get session RPE. And copy and paste that here. But we need to change it from sum ifs to average ifs. And we need to just check it. The average range, TBL load RPE, with the criteria being name and week. So that's come through okay. Those formats are a little bit rough, but we can sort that out easily. All right, what I want to do here is have a scroll graph because they're quite interesting to look at. If I want to do a scroller, I need to first go to the dashboard and insert from the developer tab a scroll bar. Now you can draw these vertically. Or you can draw these horizontally. I'm going to do this one horizontally and I'm just going to put it here just like I did with the spinner. I just want to format the control. We want the minimum value to be 1, the maximum value to be 10, incremental change to be 1, page change to be 5, and the cell link needs to be on the workings page, U14. Just going to click on it once to move it along. So there's our scroll bar index that's currently set on two. So what we want to show is 10 weeks of data, but we want the user to be able to scroll back in time and see the data from previous weeks. So it's relatively simple. Index function. in the week. If I lock in just the row numbers, I can drag this formula across. So this will work great for the first row of the table. Let's go back to the scroll bar and click a few more ahead. You can see now it's scrolled up to week 22 and the scroll bar index is 4. What I'd like to have is just the, the need to just do the formula once. What I'm doing here is plus U16 minus 1. That's basically saying the first row is just the scroll bar index, but everything else is going to increment up by 1. So if I drag this down, or double click even, you can see it's going to increment 22, 23, 24, and so on. I should just be able to drag this across, tidy up my formats, and be in a position to draw an interesting scrollable graph. Now what we need to decide is if we want to show all of these three measures on one chart or on three separate charts. What I'm going to do is just start with the obvious one, which is session RPE load. This is a time series, and I've said a couple of times already that line charts are better for this, but just to contradict myself, I'm going to use a column chart here because I think it makes a little bit more sense. Before I take it across to the other sheet, I just want to put in those labels and 
I kind of like making those gaps a little bit smaller and the bars a bit thicker. So I'm going to cut that, put it on the dashboard. I'm not going to worry about the size just yet, but let's just see what happens with the scroller. All right, so we can see that it's going up to week 37. And so if I go back into my format control, I need to change that maximum value to 11 because we know we've got week 38 data. And so there we are there. If I scroll across here, what I might do is copy that. Just narrow that down a bit. Copy that across. Well, RPE and duration are interesting. They're a little bit less interesting than training loaders. So I'm going to manifest that by having those charts be a little bit smaller. I do need to change the data source on them. like so and stupidly I didn't do things in the right order and I now have to reformat these charts again but it only takes a second let's just change it up purple and gray is fine and so I mentioned earlier that you might want to align wellness with um, one or all of these charts I'm going to just put it on the session RPE load chart just because that's kind of got the most direct relevance Let's go back to the working sheet. We could look at total wellness here, or we could allow the user to pick which one they wanted to look at um, using a method similar to what I've shown before. Let's just do total wellness for now because it uh, kind of makes the most sense, really. We want to do average ifs. We need to go to the wellness page. We need to look in the wellness sum column. Let's put in our criteria. And we drag across and click on our name. Lock it with the F4 key. And we obviously have to put that week in as well and directly reference it to whatever's been selected here. Double click and send that down. Once again, I think um, just tidying up that formatting would be a good idea. Now on the dashboard sheet, we right click, select data, add, Call it wellness, lock in the data, make sure it clearly understands that it is aligned to those same labels. And it doesn't make a lot of sense at the moment, so we can go into this right click option here and choose that wellness is in fact a line and that it sits on a secondary axis. Now if we do that we do need to do a little bit of work to the chart itself to make that clear and so we've now got these three dynamic charts that can be scrolled through and all of them will update in front of our eyes if we wanted to. Because these two are so tightly grouped, 
I might just include them in one section, which really just leaves us the medical section to go. Now if I format painter that and drag that across, we've now got our little heading in place and we can get towards this last piece. Let's go to the medical page and see what we're talking about. And so we've got an availability status, uh, which is a number. I've talked about it before. It's on the right here in the control panel. If they have a status of three, that's fully available for training or match play. Otherwise, there's some modifications required or they're unavailable. And so that status number, the rating of 0, 1, 2 or 3, gives us the ability to do some basic stats. So on the medical table we could say for each player for each week what was their availability score. So let's start with that. Let's go to the workings. Let's get a little bit of space here. And so let's go through all the weeks of the season just to see what their availability has been like. We can use average ifs, we've done this several times. We've got a sheet called medical. We've got an availability status column, so that's our average range sorted out. Now we just need to lock in our two criteria, which are the same as the ones we've used over and over. I know that the name is in B2, so I don't need to look. And that we want to go by a week. And we have that right here. Let's convert that to a number, and we can see that this athlete's been pretty good. Right down the bottom, we can see we haven't got any data for week 39, so there's a bit of an error. Now, something that I haven't done in this video, but I've used previous ones. And it really makes sense when you're using the average function. These if error, those div zero errors disappear for me. We previously worked out what was the last week that's got data. We knew that that's week 38. We can use that number to help create a dynamic chart. And so a dynamic chart requires dynamic ranges. I'm going to call these ranges dr weeks. and DR availability. If we just scroll up a little bit, we see that we've got 38 as the most recent week. We establish that by looking at the date in the wellness table that has the highest value. And so if we have this number 38, we can create a dynamic range so that if this changes to 39, it'll increase. Under formulas and define name, I'm going to type in here DR weeks. I'm going to write a formula inside this refers to box. Click on the equal sign and click on week one. Put a colon and when I do that colon it automatically puts in N41. I need to backspace that. I'm not sure why Excel does that but I always take great care in making sure I spot it and backspace away. This function is going to allow the formula to determine how big the range is based upon this number here which is 38. 
So if that number became 39, this range would expand down another row. I'm going to copy that and use it again. The second range is in O, and we just need to realign those three values. The number is still in N36, so we don't need to change that one. If I go to my name manager, I can see we've got our two dynamic ranges there, DR availability and DR weeks. Click on the finder button. You can see those dash lines show us what it's looking at. It's capturing down to week 38. If I went to the wellness table and added a new row of data, let's say, because we've been using Caitlin as an example, that I use her. Let's say I use the 24th of the 2nd, 2017. And I just put some numbers in there. We're going to go back to our working sheet and we'll see now that week 39 is showing. Now this is an error because we haven't got any workload data for that week. But I'm just trying to demonstrate how those dynamic ranges work. Let's go back to the name manager. Once again look at DR weeks and we'll see now it goes to week 39. Back to my wellness sheet, delete that row, and get on with it. So dynamic ranges are pretty cool. Just going to select a few weeks, insert, line chart. Change the axis. We only want it to go to 3. We don't need so many grid lines, and we don't need any decimal places on the app. At the moment, when we click on this, we can see it's only getting half our data, and it's still referring to just cell references up there. So the key part of dynamic charts is being able to create the dynamic ranges first and foremost, but then put them into the chart settings. So that's twice we need to do it, once in the axis values and once in the data values. Take away these cell references, hit the F3 button, and we want to choose availability. Same thing here, backspace away, leave the sheet reference, but put in the axis labels. So let's cut that, go over to the dashboard, and put it in. Let's say we put it there. Now let's just sort of mirror what we did over here on the physical data for the medical data in this little space here. When you just do a single criteria, so an average if the sequence of variables inside the formula is different, it's easy to get caught out by this. So we need to put our criteria first. TBR medical name and scroll up to the top to choose our athlete. Now we put in the average range. It's a bit of a strange one, that one. It's easy to get caught out, so you're not alone if this has happened to you. So we've got our average availability of 2.56. We might compare that to a team average or something like that. Just to get a reference point. If we did that, it's just a simple average
with no criteria at all. So we can see that this athlete is slightly worse than the team averages. So the team's been pretty lucky this year. Put a little box around that to make it stand out. Let's go into a little bit more detail as to um, what sessions may have been missed or modified by this athlete. Let's go to the control panel. We can see that these are the categorizations that we have made. On the dashboard, we can simply paste values them in. The count ifs will give us this information. So we need to go to TBL Medical. We go to the category field. And check for this criteria. We also need to make sure it's just for this athlete. So we can see that 10 sessions were missed or modified due to illness, 10 through injury and other was 13. If you're in a medical role with this team, you're likely to have put a, another column or multiple columns in uh, this table to say what the injury type was, even if it was a broad category such as muscle versus bone joint, for example, but um, haven't got this in this data set because I've been trying to keep it simple. Now let's go back to the dashboard here. I'm just going to zoom out slightly and so we can see all of our little bits here. If I go up here, I can auto hide the ribbon, get a bit more space. That means I can now scroll it all a little bit bigger. I don't need my logo to be showing if I'm going to be working with this athlete. Delete this away. And so if I choose a different name up here, all of these charts are now changing. I can interact with this one physical chart. I can interact with this load RPE and duration chart. And I can see a bit more detail about all the different areas. I haven't really made these particularly tidy. So um, very quickly, I'm going to do some of that. And to do so, I need to bring that ribbon back up. So excuse me while I do that. So in about an hour, we've been able to extract information from six different sheets into this dashboard. As I mentioned, this wouldn't be the only report that I'd have inside a file like this. I would be making more detailed sub-reports for physical profile, match performance, and so on. So if you're working on your own dashboard project, it really doesn't matter how many different types of data you have. You can pull pieces together into a dashboard. The key is hopefully as you've seen that there are really common elements across all the data sets. So I've used a control panel to guarantee that. I've got week labels, player name labels, date labels and things like that that allow all of the different things to be pulled together with just that single drop down box. If you want a copy of this video, don't be shy, send me an email to this address and I'll send the file through. Um, I will follow up with a third video just showing a few different options that you might choose just in case this is something that takes your fancy. Thanks for listening and I'll see you soon.